Okay, everyone. Uh, we're back here with the hexacopter, with the hexacopter project. I don't know if you could tell the difference, but uh, we've done my son and I quite a bit to it. We actually added the power board, which uh, originally was connected directly to the ESCs, and I changed my mind on that because I figured that if they go bad, I'm gonna have to take the whole thing apart. So went ahead and took them apart again because it wasn't put together and I added these connectors to each one of them. Each one of them on this side has three of them. The colors actually match. Um, they match the cables on the on the motors. Okay, that way it's easy to track and trace and you know pretty easy and simple. Okay and simple is the key. Now if you look under under there you could see uh, there's these connectors for each one of these ESCs okay uh, they were, I wouldn't say expensive, but you know, it took a while to get everything soldered. You know, it took me, took me about six hours to uh, to get this whole thing done. Um, and I know, I know how to solder, and you know, so whoever is gonna do this um, is really in for a treat. Anyway. Um, I tested everything, I, I put everything the way it's supposed to be. Um, I made number one. I'm gonna make this a uh, hexacopter, okay? Now, there's um, another type of hexacopter, which is really not a hexacopter, it's an H-copter, okay? And the difference is that you got these two arms here going forward. Now mine, only this arm is gonna go forward. And now that's, when you get to put your control board, which is here, the difference would be that with the uh, the one I'm building, you have to put the arrow facing the arm that's going forward. Now with the H copter, you have to put the arrow, not the board, the actual arrow from this board right here. It needs to be pointing between number one and number two uh, arm. Okay, that's the main difference. And then you have to most likely do some programming on this board uh, to make it act different. But I think actually the only difference would be to put this thing like that and actually because these two motors are gonna be um, one it goes one goes one way one the other you know you really have to uh, probably do some programming to the controller anyways I'm building the uh, the one with the plus which is a hexaho hexacopter plus okay which is only one arm going forward and then these two arms are gonna be on the side okay and then obviously this is the back um, what I did these connectors here for the ESCs that were not long enough so what I did is that I'm going to uh, I'm going to add extensions to each one of them um, that way I can connect this whole thing now all, all these um, uh, posts that I got the, uh, the spacers and standoffs you know they're the same they're the same length um, the reason why I'm just putting them like this is because I want to show you guys how this is going to look. Um, oh, one more thing I forgot. You see these things here on the board? Those are for LEDs. Okay, now when I bought this power board, um, I wanted to have LEDs in, on, on this hexacopter to make it look cool at night, especially when it flies at night, if I ever get to fly it at night. So at least get a separate power bus. Okay, so here's where I would connect. Uh, the receiver or the receiver channel to light this up okay um, if I want I could split them by cutting the board and split them in half you know like like I could take three LEDs for one thing and three for others um, I still have my uh, my landing my landing LEDs which is pretty which are pretty cool uh, right here and these are gonna be like you know, I'm just gonna shove them right in there, and, and they're gonna go like that. And they, these are actually pretty bright. Um, anyways, uh, LEDs are cool because the energy factor it's uh, pretty low, and that's what I like about them. You know, want to put lamps or bulbs or anything like that on one of these. Anyways, this is you know kind of like mucked up like that. Now I got my receiver. It's an eight-channel receiver. Okay, I can put all kinds of stuff on that. The only channels I need is the first four, okay? 
So I got my elevator, my aileron, my throttle, and my rotor on this thing here. This receiver cost me about $40, okay, and it matches my radio, okay? And uh, these two things here cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, but if you already have a radio, just buy your receiver, bind it, and you're putting it in good shape, okay? And then this is the board. I see the arrow right here. I need to point the arrow, okay, in that direction, okay? Now, what I was gonna do is that I have uh, the screws for up here, but because I'm gonna add yet one more board, okay, I'm gonna put this standoffs, okay. Now, this one here, essentially is going to be for the autopilot. Now the autopilot is gonna be on its own, and uh, it's gonna go just like this okay so you can see I got three floors of stuff in there now for the LEDs I actually bought you know made in China stuff cheap I bought two little boxes and I'm gonna put them probably under here or in here okay and then I'm gonna run my LEDs everywhere okay and they come with everything I pay like 12 bucks for them I bought two of them as 25 bucks and I think it's gonna be a pretty cool thing. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, the super duper battery here. Um, I charged it overnight and uh, it seemed like uh, it's gonna last me about eight to 10 minutes depending on what kind of power I'm gonna be riding this thing on. Okay, so. I went ahead and bought another battery, identical to this one, and uh, we're gonna see how that's going to be uh, adding up. I mean, it's gonna be 8,000 milliamp hours. That's uh, eight amps. That's a lot. And uh, I mean, I already programmed this board, by the way, and uh, I'm also gonna make a video on that. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. It was a little challenging. Uh, to, to find the driver and set up the computer because the driver didn't want to work and I had to do a, a signature bypass I had to you know go into the web and look for a program that can get rid of I have Windows 7 on my computer so I had to get rid of the signature that the, pro, that the operating system puts on the drivers in order for it to be legit well the driver that I downloaded for for uh, for the programmer, okay, um, apparently it's not signed or tested by Windows. So the operating system puts some mark on it on the registry and it jacks it up. So I had to download this program that actually bypasses that and then I was able to program the board. Okay, I'm gonna, I already wrote uh, an instructional on that, on that board, especially I couldn't find anything specifically for that board on the web and what I was trying to do so I'm gonna make one that will actually be specifically for this hexacopter now what I'm gonna do now which is kind of unusual and I wasn't gonna do it but I'm just gonna do it real quick um, I thought that this would be uh, uh, pretty cool so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna connect these things okay each one each one has its own thing it goes to now number one is on this one just keep that in mind you know you need to put these things in the right order this is number two actually I'm doing it backwards hold on get this thing backwards so number one is this one over here so line up each color white with white it should be all set then I got number two on the side. And it's that one. See? And the whole thing is that the rotation, the rotation is this way. When I label these, 
I did it the other way around. I did it counterclockwise. Um, and it should, it should have been clockwise. Okay, so it's arm number one, two, three, four, five, and six. But the thing is that if you don't really do it the way it's supposed to be, when you put your props and you put your engines and your motors, you know, you're going to have to do some magic to uh, make them rotate in the, in the right direction. So just keep in mind it's clockwise. Um, now this one would be number two. Then uh, motor number three. Let's see number four. Okay. Three, this is number two. Looks like I'm I'm getting on my cables here confused. Hold on. Just kind of like be, be patient and you'll get it. Uh, just be sure you're plugging them in in the right order, that's all. Now, this is number two. And then number three. Then number four. Now, the, the, the good thing is these extensions, they're actually kind of cool because, you know, it gives you some room. Gives you some room, um, and you could tie them up later. Okay. Now I got them all connected all the way down to six. Um, and they're pretty much out of the way from the props. Now I'm gonna ask my son to move a little bit away. I got everything pretty much connected. Uh, and out of harm's way. Um, so, the first thing I did was to turn on my radio, everything down, okay? I know my switch is in the outward position, okay? When I turn this on, okay, then I can go ahead and plug in the battery in here. And you'll hear, you'll hear the motors initialize, okay, and also my link here will be made in, you know, this computer radio. Okay, the cool thing about it, the program I put in this hexacopter, and you can see the receiver here, is completely slinked, okay, but this thing is not really armed, okay. And that's kind of like a good thing because if this thing was armed and you hit it by mistake, you probably get hurt. Okay, anyway, the board itself has an LED that will turn blue when you put this, um, the throttle, bottom left, okay? It took me a while to figure that out because the instructions on the web says bottom right, okay? So I kept messing around with it until I figured that, you know what, it's probably the other one and after couple of hours of fiddling around with it I finally got it and it, it was armed okay now I'm just gonna hold it here I adjusted my pots in here okay I put them all in the middle and then I gave them you know a little bit of a, a sideway curve depending on which way I want this thing to go um, but anyway uh, just so that you know and you hear the way this thing sounds okay uh, here we go, okay? So 
I think full throttle would definitely make this thing go. Okay, um, that was about uh, halfway, and I was holding it down for it not to fly out. Um, I personally think it's gonna do pretty good, and uh, this battery is gonna hold uh, the weight of this really good. Now, when I add the other battery, it's gonna give me a nice range of flight. I already kind of like calibrated this somewhat, so I know it's gonna go in the right direction, okay? Um, anyways, this is all I wanted to show for now, and uh, as you can see, I added some some cool little things here uh, with springs. That way, I'm not forcing those. But this most more like this will just come out or come off. I wanted to make a training uh, gear or something like that, but these are not strong enough. They were longer, and I had to cut them off. But anyway. Um, once I get to the point, I'll show another video. Now the video after this one is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna disarm this, okay? You see I turned off. Uh, so now this thing won't hurt me if I hit it by mistake. Anyway, um, my next video is gonna be programming this board, okay? And uh, for those of you that are being challenged by that, you know, it's really not an easy thing. Um, I mean, you don't have to be super smart, but let me tell you, if you don't know what you're looking at, it's kind of confusing. Um, and it took me a while to figure it out without instructions. Um, anyways, but I got it, and I think uh, this thing is going to be really cool to see fly. Uh, especially, it was handmade, uh, built from scratch, you know, and that's kind of like a cool thing. Anyway, uh, once I get to the other video, I'll put a post on my channel, and you guys can go ahead and... Uh, look at it okay this video is going to be uploaded tonight uh it's uh tuesday uh the 11th so uh, i'm going to be uploading this video for you guys to see and enjoy okay until the next one and uh talk to you soon bye